Hi friends and welcome to my channel. My name is Susanna and in this video I'll be showing you how I edit corporate portraits. Before we get into the retouching part of the video, let's talk for a minute about how a corporate portrait should look like. First of all, we have to keep in mind that the person in the image is going to be using this photo for all kinds of things. Email signatures, corporate websites, catalogs, leaflets, even banners if you're working for a realtor, for example. So the most important part of your edit will be making the image look as natural as possible. That means that your retouch should be very light-handed and you should only focus on healing problem areas. You really shouldn't change the person's facial features, blur the skin into oblivion or even dodge and burn too hard. Remember that your client will use this photo on a day-to-day -day basis and it will reach people that know them, so you have to restrain yourself and keep it natural and realistic. Now that we've settled the ethical part of our retouch, let's get to business. As always, I'm using frequency separation to edit the skin, and if you don't know how to set it up, don't worry, click the link in the top right corner and it will direct you to a really simple tutorial. I'm gonna start on the lower layer, which is the color and tone, and I'll be fixing all the color imbalances in the skin, while being really careful not to introduce new tones in the photo. If the white balance is properly done, like it is in this image, there's no reason for me to paint in a new skin tone, so I'll just use the healing brush and the brush tool to use the colors that are already in the image. I'm being really careful not to go too much in the shadows as this has a tendency to change the bone structure. I'm only trying to blend the skin tone seamlessly so that I can afterwards come back on my texture layer and work on the little problems in the skin. Now that I'm satisfied with how the color and tone look like, I'll be moving to the texture layer and I'm going to start working while always keeping a really small brush so that I don't move too many pixels around. I'm going to start by carefully removing all the tiny specks of dry skin, but as you can see I'm not touching most of the pores and I'm not changing anything about the lines under the eyes because I already evened out that area on the lower layer of my frequency separation. So I'm only healing the pores that seem to be larger and I'm also removing the tiny bumps in the skin. Keep in mind not to remove molds unless the client asks and not to make freckles fade away. Take a good look at the image and make sure that you're only healing things that shouldn't be there. And as I keep turning the layers on and off I notice that there's quite a bit of work to be done in the beard and the hairline. So I'm going to start to heal away all the beard hairs that stand out but I'm not going into detail work just yet. I'll return to the beard and hairline after I finish my dodge and burn which is actually the next step in this retouch. I'm just gonna set up my dodge and burn layers real quick and if you don't know how to do this click on the link in the top right corner and it will direct you to a really fast tutorial on how to get this done. As always I'm going to start working on the dodge layer first and then move on to the burn layer. All I'm doing in this step is lightening all the areas where the light naturally falls while on the burn layer I'll be darkening the shadows and the contour of the face because I want to give the image more depth and more dimension. Remember to dodge and burn the entire image and that means clothing and other body parts as well. Switching to the burn layer, I'm going to now darken all the shadows and contours and enhance the beard just a little bit. I know that the image is starting to look a bit crazy, but keep in mind that at the end I'll be turning down the opacity on all the layers, including the entire dodge and burn group. I usually set the opacity of all these layers to 50% and then decide if I need to turn them down even lower, but in this case I think 50% is quite right and the portrait looks pretty natural. Now I'll be moving on to the layer where I'll be working on the flyaway hairs in the hairline and in the beard. I'm pressing Ctrl Alt Shift E for a new layer which contains all the edits that I've made below. This way I'm working on a separate layer that I can always delete if I mess up. 
I'll be using a combination of the healing and spot healing brush and I'll be heavily using the clone stamp tool to make flyaways disappear and to also even out the length of the beard. Now that that's all done, it's time for a little bit of liquify, but only to give the suit a better fit. I'm checking the edges of the sleeves and making sure that they don't poof out too much, and I'll also check the lapel and make sure that it's straight. I'm gonna go ahead and do a bit of liquify on the face. Because of the way that he's standing and turning towards the camera, his lower lip is a bit tilted, so I'll just give that a quick fix, and I'll also fix the hairline a bit by giving it a more cohesive line. And that's it really, all that's left to do is a bit of sharpening using unsharp, but this part is optional and you don't really need it if you think that your image is sharp enough. I know, this was a long one, but editing corporate portraits is actually pretty important, because even though you're using the same techniques, you have to practice some restraint and aim towards a natural looking image. So I'll wrap this up, and as always, thank you so much for watching, and please consider hitting that subscribe button before exiting this video. Take care!